Hello fantastic creatures, I'm Fantasims and welcome to my channel. In this video we're going to be taking a tour of my work in progress Ilvermorny, which is the American version of Hogwarts. Okay, so for those of you who aren't familiar, JK Rowling has said that there are 11 top wizarding schools and eight of those schools have been disclosed, one of them being Ilvermorny that we're going to be looking at today. And she actually created a short story and short film about how Ilvermorny was founded. And so I'll give you a really quick overview of basically what happened because that informs us why the school is shaped the way that it is and some of the details that we see throughout it. So Ilvermorny is located deep in the woods on a mountain in Massachusetts and founded by an Irish settler Isolt Sayer. Her story has similar elements to Harry Potter. She was raised by her evil aunt, from whom a Voldemort is a descendant by the way. So when Isolt was five, her aunt killed both her parents and used dark magic to keep Isolt trapped and isolated from the world. She was not allowed to go to Hogwarts or own her own wand, but when she was 17, Isolt bravely escaped her evil aunt's clutches, stealing her aunt's wand, which happened to be the wand of Salazar Slytherin, and a gold Gordian knot brooch that belonged to her mother. She fled to England and disguised herself as a boy, but realized that her her aunt's amazing tracking abilities would soon expose her whereabouts, so in 1620 she sailed to America on the Mayflower. Figuring she could still be tracked across the world by her aunt, she hid deep in the mountains of Massachusetts. And a bunch of really cool stuff happens which we'll gloss over, maybe at another time we'll go into detail, but basically after that she fell in love with a muggle called James Stewart. he was great at building, and they married and had two children, and Isolt was obsessed with Hogwarts and created her own school from the cottage James had built for them, which is now part of the larger castle, to teach her children magic. Since they had had such a great relationship with the local indigenous tribe, the school began to incorporate indigenous children as well, so the school is heavily influenced by Irish and Native American culture. Alright, so this is what I have built so far, and the overall shape and design is informed by the images that JK Rowling has released based on the short film as well. And so you have kind of this double entrance. Here's the main entrance right here, and currently I have a bunch of plants and everything because I don't know how I'm going to landscape it. But here is the original cottage that the school began in when Isolt was just teaching her children and so inside I've given it this old cabin in the woods type of feel to it as well as a bit of a Tudorish type of style and something about this build I mean I started building this back in 2019 I think and I just haven't really worked on it since then so this is before a bunch of the updates that we've been that we've had and a bunch of the packs that have come out recently but as you can see here I connected foundations all different foundation heights and so even though when you put all even though when you put all the levels up it looks like this is one building right here that connects this foundation height to this foundation height it actually isn't I did that because you need to leave a tile gap between foundation heights so I filled in the gap with arches and architectural detail so you can't tell but that's how I got different foundations heights to link together so I had a lot of fun playing with different foundations. Now the main shape of this castle is this round part right here and then this sort of great hall which is informed by JK Rowling's short story and basically what happens is new students first enter into this round part of the castle and there are four huge statues that represent the four different houses. So we have over here the horned serpent and yes I used a dragon so it has wings so I'm gonna have to find a way to hide those wings but I think the statues are wooden or maybe they're stone. I think they're wooden. I think she just describes them as being wooden. And so you've got the horned serpent which represents the scholars, you've got the panther wampus which represents warriors, and I think panther wampuses are basically panthers with six legs. <laughs> I can't remember all the details about them. So and then you have the thunderbirds which represents warriors, and then you have the puckwudgies which represent healers. So I created these totem looking statues and what happens is students come in and whichever house they belong to the eyes of the statue will glow and that's how they get sorted. And if you can see on the floor, I've created a trinity knot, a Gordian knot, to tie into Isolt Sayer's mother's brooch because that's a symbol that is found throughout the castle. Now in the story this is pretty much the only thing that can be found in this round circular castle but because we're working with the sims and we're limited on our space I'm trying to also incorporate some other areas within it as well. So I'm not really sure what to do in these other areas, you can let me know. I put in some school bathrooms because we definitely need bathrooms and then I didn't know whether to turn these into hallways that can affect a student's moodlets so maybe having a museum, kind of like how the moving staircase in Hogwarts has all of those portraits. Could do some portraits in there, I don't know what to do here. If you guys have any ideas you can definitely let me know. And then in the back we have this tower that leads you up to the other levels. And upstairs we have this very fancy library. And the school colors are 
are cranberry and navy blue. I think cranberry is because James loved cranberry pie, and the, or that might have been Isolt's favorite color. I can't remember. I should probably have looked that up before I did this video. And then the other favorite color is navy blue. And so I'm probably going to use no CC art to replace them because Isolt has dark brown hair. But I'm, I'm going to put a portrait of Isolt and James as like the founders of the school. And then here is a circular library. It kind of reminds me of a very grand like reference section of a fancy library. And I'm going to put some sort of trim at the top to hide these parts that are poking through. And then upstairs we have another part of the library and I use some more old fashioned looking books and scrolls over here. And I just love the lighting because this part of the castle is described by Rowling as having one of those glass roofs. There's a special name for it, but I can't think of it off the top of my head. So I chose this very 1800s looking roofing because it casts this really cool pattern of lighting inside. Okay, then after they've been sorted into their houses, they head on over to their version of a great hall and ignore the lighting and the trim and everything. It's gone super funky, so I need to fix that. But again, I created these as different foundation heights, so it connects with this weird kind of hallway that actually goes up a level and then goes back down. And we've got these sweeping balconies. I wanted it to look very fancy and regal, kind of like a palace. So what happens is they come into the main hallway and that's where they find their wand. So unlike Hogwarts where you purchase your wand before you come to school, they actually give you your wand once you get to school. Once you've been sorted into your houses, you then get a wand. So there's not really a lot of room here to do something where they collect their wands. So I'm thinking maybe the wand ceremony can be held at the front of this great hall, like up here on the platform. And now that we actually have platforms, I'm going to replace these fake stairs and platforms I created and put a real one. Let's just put some lighting in for a second because it's really dingy. Okay, that's much better. I've put in some temporary lighting just so that you can see. And the reason this looks so funky is that before we got the windows update, I had demolished this wall. So it actually had outdoor lighting inside, which I did not like because I wanted these massive stained glass windows and it's got this dark shadow. I'm going to have to fix all that up. And that's why you can see outdoor lighting on some of the objects that are inside. So I need to fix all that. And I also built this before using tool mod. So I'll be fixing flickering issues as well. But I created these um, these fire lantern thingies that also you see in Hogwarts, except in Hogwarts they have the different houses represented for each of the fire... I don't even know what are those things called? The things with fire in them. <laughs> anyway, I did style it after the Hogwarts' Great Hall because Isolt was so obsessed with Hogwarts, I figured elements of Hogwarts would be in this castle. Now over in the courtyard we have this tree which is a huge iconic symbol of the school because Salazar Slytherin's wand ended up getting buried and it turned into a healing tree. So in the short film that was created for the story, the symbol of a tree is found in this tall tower so I use the doors from Realm of Magic because they have that tree design in it and I'm thinking of turning it into a sort of clock tower because otherwise I don't really know what the reason for this tower is <laughs> so um, it's not going to end up looking like this I was just playing around with clocks to see how I could design it and style it and then these little buildings over here I was thinking of turning into the houses because there's four different houses like I said we're not sure of the color scheme for each of the houses like some fan fiction has come up with different colors for the houses and so that's kind of what I chose for these. So we've got the horned serpent over here is represented by ice blue. And so I'm thinking at the entrance of each of the houses, um, I put up awards and flags and stuff that represent their house. So this is all just cluttered. I just put it there for me to style later. And then it leads up into these little areas, these little dorm rooms. So there's not a lot of room to work with, but hopefully it should be big enough to be playable. And then here's the puck wedgies. So this is the entrance to their dorm room. And I think the color the fan fiction said was gray and red, or maybe it was just red, but I kind of think yellow suits them a bit better kind of like Hufflepuff so originally I had all the rooms decorated in red and it's at a bit of a funky angle so I'm definitely gonna have to fix all this area up and then they had the color of the Thunderbirds as purple which did look really cool but I feel like the Thunderbird suits red a lot better especially because I used these feathered darts from Jungle Adventure as the wings so I think I'm gonna stick with a red theme for this house and then the Panther at Wampus is green and I think green suits the Panther Wampus so or even purple would probably suit it I don't know you guys can let me know what colors you think would suit them best uh, it's a bit of a cramped space so what I also did was I built some underground rooms that we can use as dorm rooms as well for some added space. I might reshape them we'll see. And then over on the right side of the castle I'm thinking of turning this area into some classrooms. I mean this top part is very small and we've got this little garden area over here like a secret garden. So I might put a barbecue or some sort of gardening activity over here. I just thought it'd be fun to have a little whimsical area. We've got the animal shaped hedges and so underground we'll have bigger space 
spaces to maybe put some classrooms in. And then over here in the back, I thought this tower could be good for teachers' offices. So I thought the headmaster's office could be up here at the top of the tower. Almost like it's uh, mimicked after Dumbledore's office. And then we'll just put some offices down here. Although I think I'll try and incorporate some other activities so it's not just a redundant tower of a bunch of offices with computers and stuff. And then maybe some underground classrooms of some sort. Who knows? And then in this back part of the castle, we have a glass building that acts as a greenhouse. And here they can take their herbology classes. So on the first level, it can be like herbology 101 with all the basics. And then as you advance in the classes, you go up to higher floors. And so then you've got an upperclassman classroom for herbology. And over here is where the teacher's desk is. Again, flickering issues will be resolved with the tool mod. And then the classrooms get smaller as you go up because those that advance in herbology, these are like super exclusive classrooms. I don't know how to decorate them yet, but I want to make them look very secretive. And then maybe up here is where the herbology professor lives. So put a little bedroom in there or maybe another secret classroom. This one is just a decorative tower. I just wanted to add a nicer silhouette to the building. And then I might have to fix up this tower. This tower is also going to be classrooms. But as you guys know, towers are very jumpy with the camera. So I'm not sure whether to keep it as classrooms or something that your sims don't have to access very often. But in this top floor, we have an kind of like an astronomy tower. So I used the glowing orbs from Realm of Magic, but it is a very tight space. So I don't know if it would be usable. And then in the floor below, we have another classroom. I'm not really sure what to make this. I did put like teacups and everything. It looks more like a dining hall. And then in the floor below, we have another classroom, but I'm not really sure what to do with this one. And then on the ground floor, I put in this portal from a Realm of Magic because there's really no way to access this tower. There wasn't enough room to put in a staircase, so this is how it, this is just going to be like a grand entrance. And then as you go down into the basement, there's going to be all these classrooms. And because the camera doesn't jump around on basement levels, I think I'm going to go into more detail with how the classrooms are going to be underground. And then at the very bottom, I thought it would be perfect to do a defense against the dark arts type of classroom. So I started gathering objects that I thought would look cool in that kind of a classroom. And similarly to Hogwarts, underneath the Great Hall, I'm thinking of doing a massive kitchen. And at the moment, I've just got a bunch of cluttered objects that I'm thinking of using throughout the castle but I just put them all in the same room. You guys know me, the way that I build I clutter everything up before I figure out what I want to do with it and then here's another room that at the moment it looks a bit more like the room of requirement <laughs> so I don't know what to put in this one either but I thought that underneath the healing tree, I'm probably going to get rid of this mother plant, um, but underneath the healing tree that's in the courtyard as you see here we've got these roots that go down into the ground and I thought kind of like how Hogwarts has all these secret chambers that you can explore to have adventures with. I'm thinking of turning this underground portion into some sort of, I don't know, something cool is happening underneath the healing tree. So I'm not quite sure how I want it to look, but I'm playing with the idea. And then I have a bunch of no CC art that I've collected that I want to use throughout the castle. And I found this really cool Native American looking paintings. So I'm going to incorporate those somehow because I really love that there's that mix of culture between Irish and Native American. So I'm definitely going to be including them. And then this is the school crest that was painted by Jules64. I asked if she would do a crest for each of the eight wizarding schools that we know of so far and so she did that for me so you can download her paintings in the gallery and then here's an extra room that I really don't know what to do with maybe make another secret chamber with some sort of crazy wizard underground who knows all right now underneath the circular hall I made this huge lecture room for potions I, I based it off of a old college styled classroom I just felt like Ilvermorny would have a bit more of that American collegiate style mixed with the European so we have all of these elevated desks like I said I built this before I started using tool so I'm going to fix up some of these areas and actually now that we have platforms maybe I can find a way to turn these into platforms instead and have desks that your sims can actually access I might do that unless it's too difficult and then I'll just leave it the way that it is and then this is where ignore this poking through but this is where the lecturer demonstrates and then here's a bunch of practice stations to practice potions and in live mode you can see I added fire and chimney stacks to give it a smoky look like they're brewing potions although it kind of does make it super smoky I don't know if I'll keep the chimney stacks let me know what you guys think and just like my life this room is absolute chaos so I thought this would be a great classroom for magizoology where they learn all about the magical creatures and so I collected a whole bunch of creatures and objects that I thought I could make look magical almost like an underground outdoor area where the animal are temporarily magically kept for lesson purposes but then they're released back into the wild or whatever because I want this to be a humane school. So I've got some blue mannequins over here that we can turn into pixies although they're life-size and pi pixies are supposed to be tiny so 
know. Who knows? I'm not quite sure what I'm going to come up with. And then I have no idea what I was doing here at the center, so I'll probably delete that. And then down here, we're going to have some more classrooms. So I've divided it into four, so we can have four different classrooms. And this is maybe like a magical archaeology class or something. I don't know. I haven't figured out what kind of classrooms I want to do. Definitely give me your feedback with any ideas you have for what I could do. And then at the bottom here, it's kind of an oddly shaped classroom, and I was trying to give it a vaulted ceiling look. So it looks cool from a Sims perspective when you're looking like this, and you're looking up those beams make a bit more sense than when you're looking down on it. And then over here is a painting, and before I started using Toolmod, when I resized the painting, it was too small to be the size of a regular Sim. So this size is way too big, but I thought that was actually cool, because he could be a half giant professor. So I oversized his desk. This is the size of the Sim. As you can see, it's a lot bigger. And I used this painting by Jules64 to, to act as the professor teaching the class. So I oversized everything on his desk as well and will clutter up this area to make it look really cool. And then here are the student stations. I'm not really sure what to put in the rest of the classroom because I didn't want to divide it up into lots of different classrooms, but it looks a bit weird to have this as just one big one. So we'll see. I'm not quite sure what to do with it. And the center part goes up into a special storage area where I'll put like bottles and supplies used for potions. I mean, we already have this potions classroom that I already showed you here. So I'm not really sure what this very basement level is. Maybe this is the advanced level, the super advanced level, and only advanced students are allowed to access the special supplies. And there you go. That's what I have done so far. I hope you guys enjoyed this tour of my Ilvermorny work in progress build. Now, Rowling has admitted that there are 11 top wizarding schools, but that also means there's a lot of smaller wizarding schools. So I'd love to represent all the countries that the bigger schools don't represent. So if you have any ideas of countries that you think I should try and create a wizarding school for, because there's a lot of lots. I'm trying to fill, my save file is going to fill hopefully every single lot in all of the world. <laughs> it's a bit of a, it's a bit ambitious. We'll see if I can actually accomplish it. But I'd love to fill in some of those smaller lots with some small schools. So if you have any ideas, please let me know. If you enjoyed this video, please give it an encouraging thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell to be notified about fresh content. As always, guys, I really appreciate you and I love you so freaking much.